I think one of the things that's really um, strong about this year's program is the number of international performances that we've managed to secure. Um, we've got eight in total, which is a record really, and mostly thanks to our um, partnership with the Otago Festival. We work very closely with them, so our dates are aligned. So we're sharing four international works this year, which is fantastic. Yeah. All right. And it doesn't kick off with the mask parade this year? No, there's a bit of a change in that actually and we did deliberate long and hard over, uh, over, over the change of date but again because of our um, relationship with the, the need to work with the Otago Festival and align those dates to present those international performers it means that the start of the festival in fact falls in school holidays and of course as you know the mask parade relies on schools participating so that didn't work for us. However, um, we're very excited because it's now on the Friday, the middle of the festival Festival, which will open the Labour Weekend, which is one of our busiest periods, and certainly when we see our most international, or most visitors to the region. Um, and yeah, I think it gives us an opportunity to really showcase, you know, our, our identity here in that big community celebration. Oh. Oh, we've got a couple of incredible shows actually. One is um, Carnival of Souls Live Live Cinema, which is probably our headline act for this year. It's based on a 1960s B-grade horror movie, and it's completely overlaid with live cast, live musicians and a Foley booth operator who recreates every sound effect. Um, so it's a huge work, there's 16 people on stage. Um, it's uh, featured at the Perth Festival, the Sydney Festival, to sell out audiences and critical acclaim. So for us to be bringing that to here, to Little Nelson, is, is quite an achievement and, uh, and certainly a highlight show. Uh, one of the others is uh, Michelangelo and the Black Sea Gentleman, which is a um, cabaret performance from Australia. Michelangelo actually came uh, and was part of the Nelson Arts Festival seven years ago, and it was an amazing performance, darkly funny, very uh, black comedy, but incredible musicians. So a great show to look out for. We've got some well-known New Zealand artists. Um, uh, Trinity Roots is obviously a big one for us to be bringing here. <coughs> uh, the Top Twins, we're coming making a return. Uh, we've also got the likes of uh, Don McGlashan, Ada Connington and Julia Deans with their curated show, uh, Songs to Leave Behind, which is a beautiful performance that was commissioned by the Christchurch Arts Festival. And um, those three artists are uh, posed a series of questions, so it's quite an intimate expression uh, of, of music to them and what it means to them. So that will be a treat as well. I think we've got about uh, 16 local performances, most of which are free pre-show prior to ticketed events, and a really strong lineup of local talent, which is fantastic. So anyone can come on down to the to the granary and see those gigs in the evening, and um, and sit back and enjoy and have a glass of wine and yeah. It's a nice opportunity and it's a great platform for local artists too, obviously, to present themselves within the festival context. Yeah. <laughs> Playing the devil's advocate here, <laughs> Sophie, why is it that council feels they should put on these kinds of festivals in, in Nelson? Well, I think it's about um, bringing vibrancy to our community. It's about, I mean, performance is a, a big part of creating joy and sharing stories and songs. Um, it really is an opportunity for us to sort of celebrate who we are as a region and obviously showcase, our, showcase the arts that we're so widely known for. So, yeah. And particularly with events like the Mass Parade and Carnival, I mean, that's become obviously one of Nelson's iconic events and it's an it's a incredible community celebration. So I think Council's investment in that is, is really wonderful.